Hey, Basta Shpia for 64K and welcome to episode 7 of How To. On today's episode, I'm going to help you sort out those port 1 problems for C64 mini games. with a crappy wheelchair. Welcome to 64K. Hosted by Bass Tish B. Okay, so I'm sure at this point, if you've been loading in your own games to the C64 Mini, you've come across a game that you just cannot start. You've tried all the keys, you've done the keyboard overlay, you've hit F1 and all this stuff, and the game still doesn't start. It's probably a port one issue. Now what that is, is if you look at an original Commodore 64 here, you got port 1, port 2. So basically what that is, that's where you plug in your joysticks. And if it's a port 1 game, you plug in the joystick to port 1, port 2, plug in port 2. No problem. Predominantly, I would say like most really old Commodore 64 games from about 1982 to probably about 1985, there's a lot of port 1 action going on there. Everything after that though, Port 2 was usually always the default, at least, at least in my experience from playing classic games. So there is a, quite a lot of games out there that are Port 1 exclusives. There's a game over there, Zorro, that is a Port 1 exclusive. Uh, the other Datasoft classic game, Bruce Lee, the excellent Activision game, uh, Ghostbusters. There's a lot of other examples out there. There's probably hundreds of games that are Port 1 exclusive. So the problem comes in with the C64 Mini, it's got two USB ports on the side. And if you're an old school Commodore 64 owner, you just automatically think that that is, stands for port 1 and port 2 of your joystick. It's really not. Both of those only react to port 2, so if uh, you plug in a controller, it's going to work with any game you download that's port 2, but you cannot, if you plug it into the other one, it's just going to be the same thing. It's, it's a default port 2. So the game, if you try to start it with a port 1, it's not going to start. There's just nothing that's going to happen. <laughs> Okay, and before we get started, I just want to say if you're a new time viewer or if you've never seen any of my how-to videos, I'll make them as simple as possible for anybody. If you've never owned a Commodore 64 or know nothing about it, it does not matter. I'm going to make this as simple as possible so you can get playing those Port 1 games immediately. So first up, we're going to download a game off the internet. Just do a search, you'll find them extremely easy. We're going to use Ghostbusters as an example. That's a classic Port 1 game. When you download games off the internet, they're going to be on a lot of different file formats. The C64 Mini accepts all of these file formats, so I don't think you're going to run into any issues. So the most common file you're probably going to come across is going to end in .d64. That just stands for disk. So in this example, we're going to use Ghostbusters.d64. Then you have a Ghostbusters file in a D64 format. You have a memory card. Just drag the file across like that. We're not going to do any alterations to it right now. I just want to load it up as is and show you what happens. Okay, so we just put the Ghostbusters file onto the USB drive and plugged it in. Here is my list of games that I've got D64 files for. Here's Ghostbusters right here, that's the one we just downloaded. We haven't done any hacks to it yet. I'm just going to start that, get it loading. Ghostbusters! <laughs> okay, Ghostbusters is loaded. So we're going to skip a few things here and get straight to the part where you have to use your joystick. Okay, so this is the part in the game in the beginning where you choose your Ghostbuster equipment and as you can see, I cannot move the controller at all. This is a port 1 issue, this game is exclusively port 1, so we cannot play this game at all. So we're going to move across to my PC now and I'll show you exactly what you have to do to the file that you just downloaded to make it accessible to play. <laughs> Okay, so let's go back to that Ghostbuster.d64 file again. So all you're going to have to do is go over it and right click, go down to rename, leave the Ghostbusters name, you put an underscore next and then put J1 and hit enter. Now you've renamed it. Okay, so there it was. It's pretty simple. Here it is again at the bottom of the screen. Ghostbusters underscore 
j1.d64 or whatever file format yours ends in. So now you just take that file, you put it back onto the memory card and we put it into the C64 Mini and we'll see if it works. Okay, so I've just reloaded Ghostbusters again and we've got to the same point where the joystick kicks in and with our hack now, now we can play it. So I can buy this a piece of equipment and put it on the card just like that. Everything's working. So port one hack, done. Okay, thanks for joining me, BassishB at 64K. I hope this little tutorial was able to help you sort out your port 1 issues. If you could like and subscribe, that will be greatly appreciated. And I'm going to do a lot more C64 mini videos in the future. And I'll see you next time. Cut to credits.